my little moist, humid room. And your shower friends. Yes. <laughs> you just water it when I'm showering. Yeah. And they and then they watch you. <laughs> yeah, they watch me naked. <laughs> so why do you grow plants? Ah, oh, it's interesting. Um, especially if I like ferns and ferns grow so fast you can see how the fronds you know stretch out every day you can see the movement every day right yeah it, it's very lively and very dynamic i think and it, it helps give some kind of life to my apartment also it kind of takes me away from the outside concrete jungle of Shinjuku, this, this neighborhood. Well, hello everyone. If you're new to the channel, my name is Sean from Indonesia. It is June in Shinjuku, Tokyo, which is believed to be the world's busiest train station. And I'm on my way to visit Casey. Casey is an architect living in a tiny Tokyo apartment with an eclectic collection of plants nestled amongst personal belongings and art displays. In this episode, we can have a rare glimpse into the elusive Japanese houseplant culture, plant styling, and the unique challenge of growing plants in a tiny Tokyo apartment. Hi, Casey. Welcome. Thank Welcome you. to my place. Thank you for having me. I'm Casey. Um, I live in Shinjuku, Tokyo, which is one of the most busy cities of inside of Shin, uh, Tokyo. Um, I live very close to the station, so it's crazy convenient, but also very busy outside. And I live in a very small apartment here. I love reading books, or I have a lot of books over there. Um, I like reading, also love movies, film. Um, especially a Japanese film and also Hong Kong cinema. Um, I, I like to collect the movies, uh, DVDs, Blu-rays, and also some movie posters. I'm, I, I sleep and wake up in this bed here, this tiny bed here. Surrounded by all these plants. Yeah, so when I wake up, I see my uh, fronds of my platycerium there, and all these you know, other ferns and hoyas and other plants I have. And I, I wake up with the light, not from outside, but the actual plant growing lights. Yeah. So that wakes me up. It and automatically comes yes, on. Yes, it does. This okay. is directing uh, the rest. Mm -hmm. So in the morning, it doesn't have some uh, direct sunlight, but afternoon, it's more direct. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's too strong in the summertime. So I have uh, my um, curtains there. Also for privacy, because there's another building on the other side that can look straight through. Uh, how long have you been collecting plants? I have only been collecting plants since um, last summer, so around 10 months. I'm still a newbie. Wow, that's cool. And you jump straight into epiphytes, I see, mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us why? Sure. Um, main point is, oh, there's two main points, I guess. Uh, one is that I'm just fascinated by epiphytes, how they adapt to the um, environment is very fascinating but also most importantly because i have small space and i can use the walls you know and kind of hang them to show my um, plants here if yeah that, that's one of the main reasons i don't have much um many uh plants in the pots yeah that's cool. I noticed that about Japan too, as I'm looking around. And also, even if the plants are in pots, usually they're miniature. They have all mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. tiny pots. Hey, where do you normally buy plants from? Um, there are uh, plant events that happen um, every couple of months um, in Ikebukuro, which is it is like a it's an orchid fair. Uh, but they they sell all kinds of rare plants. Another place I would go to uh, like specialty. Um, uh, plant shops like uh, Ozaki, okay. um, where they always have some interesting plants there, right? And it's pretty cheap compared to other, you know, um, like flower shops near in central Tokyo. Mm. So I go, it's, it's a little further out, but I go there and buy them there. Also, I sometimes use, Japan is big on Yahoo auction. So I, okay. you know, buy through an internet and I bid on certain plants I like. Yeah. Um, you know, one of that that uh, platycerium it was bought. One, one die, right? Um, that's actually a, a um, hybrid of a, a elephantotis. Yeah, elephantotis and 
um, Estimalia. Sometimes my friends would give me plants. Mm -hmm. So this really I was presented from a friend. Yeah. So I was fortunate to get that. And so we didn't really swap anything, mm -hmm. but my friend gave it to me. Um, have you given the people plants? <laughs> I, I have. Um, so not the same person, but like kind someone of else. yeah, someone else. And yeah. I'm still new, so I don't have that much of an impressive uh, collection to yeah, kind of give to someone that has already you been, know been for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all these little pockets of plants that mm -hmm. just snuck into every every little nooks and cranny that you have. Yeah. For them, and also a lot of your display, um, a lot of this, this really cool that shows your character and I love that. I really like that about the Japanese people is that um, you guys express yourself a lot and you, you guys are very adventurous. You guys look at different interests, different styles of movies, music and, mm. and everything. And, and then we get to discover that each person has their own uh, unique point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the way you guys uh, j Japanese dress up. Mm -hmm. So it's, it shows through as well in the in the plant collecting and the way that you display the plants. Casey, what does plant care here look like for you? Because this is a small room and I have a lot of other things besides plants, like behind the plants, mm -hmm. I can't water these plants at the location here. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I take my plants to my small kitchen over there in mm -hmm. the sink and I water it there and it becomes a like crammed green yeah. space. Pests, I have flies mm -hmm. that come from some I don't know where, but I provide them with uh, my Japanese um, product, um, pest care um, spray. Mm -hmm. I spray outside of my in my veranda mm -hmm. and then I put it back. Then usually that does the uh, job. So what does this place look like at nighttime? So nighttime, I, I have how do you say? It? I have my sometimes I have my um, steam machine on mm -hmm. for my uh, for my moisture, and then I have my neon lights on top of my bookshelf. So that kind of looks cool. Uh, it looks uh, mysterious. Yeah. But then there's these plants, you know, hanging down. Yeah. So the the shadows and the um, the silhouettes of these plant fronds and you know leaves look very cool. I think. Look at all these interesting. Uh, I mean, some of them I'm familiar with, some of them I'm not. But even like that pilea there is looking very alien like <laughs> under this light here. This machine itself originally was a hydro with uh, growing plants with water. It's a machine for that. But I used to grow um, herbs in here, mm. but I just got um, sick of it and I started putting my small plants here. This is a, a ant plant too, actually. Okay. You can see the kind of puff here, which is supposed to get larger eventually, and that's where the ants live inside. Cool. Still small, tall. It's a small tree fern. Yeah. yeah. And it's really cool that the front is drip over, yep. your, clo over yep. your clothes here. It's very interesting uh, layout here. Do you spend a lot of time styling or is this like Everything is like effortless. This is this is well effortless in a way that there are no other options because I don't have much space. Yeah, it, it really fits in because that's the only place it can fit in. Do you choose these plants here for the color too, or? Well, that too. Yeah. It's a movie poster. Um, it's a movie that I really like, Tampopo. Yeah. yeah. About um, eating ramen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I really like the color of the poster, and then I think the yellow and the green, you know, contrast very nicely. Yeah, look at all these pots too, they contrast really beautifully. Yeah. You use a lot of moss for your mm -hmm. potting media? I, I use a lot of moss because just having dirt in this kind of building is, it's tough to manage. Cool, and what, how about nutrients? Because moss is pretty much uh, devoid of nutrients. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the fertilizing? So at all? I often forget to fertilize them, but when I do, I, I just use a common fertilizer and put it in water, yeah. spray them with, you know, once, when I remember once a week, but sometimes once a month or even less, but it still works, I think. Yeah, because in nature, they don't, like an animal don't put a dropping there every Monday, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's it's pretty random in nature. Mm -hmm. That's a begonia. Um, it's actually not. Uh, what is it? 
I mean, Maculata. It's a, it's a hybrid of Maculata and I forgot another one.、Mm. It's, it's called、um, Nagareboshi. It's like shooting star.、Uh. So it's a combination of、uh, Maculata with the, all the dots and then also behind there it's a little pink. Yeah. So, and it also, it, it's supposed to、um, flower longer than a regular Maculata.、Mm. And it's pretty strong. And then this is a、uh, Monstera、uh, Carcentiana, Peru?、Um, it's. Or Pinati Partita, it, either one. The, this two p a t i s e r i a So, this is a cultivar called Pau Pau, but a spoiling of a Pau Pau,、mm-hmm. which I got from a, a Japanese plant YouTuber. Oh, cool. And this is a pretty common, or very, the most common, uh, uh,、um, Netherlands cultivar.、Mm-hmm. So, it's Tough and you, can, you can't really kill it.、It's, Do you think these are gonna make it? I'm not sure. I, I'm trying, I, I, I let it dry out a little bit, that's why it's very weak. Okay, it doesn't want to dry out too, that much. So, when it's small like this, you、yeah. really need it watered like almost every day. Yeah. So, I try to spray it and then also water it every day. Yeah. And they actually like humidity when they're young. Yes, very much. But then when they're. That's why I have these,、um, uh, what do you call it?、Um, uh, oh, yeah. you're... Wrap this up. Yeah, I wrap it up with this plastic. So,、mm-hmm. kind of to prevent Evapor- evaporation. Yeah, evaporation. From the, from the moss. Yeah. Yeah. Some more a t h e s e r i u m s here.、Mm-hmm. And it's fascinating that you guys just have like the Japanese names here.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think a lot of us forget that there's a lot of cultivars and mutations and varieties、mm-hmm. that are found in Japan and、mm-hmm. also in Taiwan.、Mm-hmm. And many, many people actually don't really even have access to it.、Mm-hmm. Maybe someday they will, but right、mm-hmm. now it's、uh, very exclusive. Some orchids. Yes. I think you said an or- orchid. Baby orchid. Yeah, baby orchid. So these here,、mm. these orchids, are almost blooming. I was hoping them to bloom to show you to you, but、mm. still they haven't. But these are the buds? These are, these are buds, yeah. Oh, yeah, so. So these are orchids without、um, any f-、uh, leaves. So I put this curtain rod here、yeah. for the plants. And the lights. And the lights, exactly. I mean, this is the.、Um, n e p h r o l a p i s exaltada. Yes, I, exactly. I just heard a podcast. There's actually many, because they, they mutate a lot.、Mm-hmm. That's why there's many, many shapes of them、mm-hmm. all over the world.、Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I think、uh, it's called Taos, but this is a very happy Hoya. Yeah, happy Hoya. However, I haven't had this bloom yet, so I hope it will bloom soon. Do you know the name? This, I'm not really sure. I got it at a, a home center. Mm-hmm. Which is a garden center. Yeah, a garden center kind of place、yeah. for very cheap. But it was very lush, so I got it. But I'm not really sure what the name is. But this is a, a、um, uh, kangaroo fern. No, the hoofs shaped、yeah. flat, uh, fawns there. Yeah. And this has been going very nicely with all the rhizomes kind of getting crazy out here. Yeah. Have you tried propagating these? I haven't, but I think I can if I、yeah. just cut off and I should, be, I should be able to do it. It should be fun.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this one you said used to be the h u p e r t z i a but I think it's called like something else. Yeah, I forgot what the name is, but、yeah. it's the s q u a r o s a Mutate. Okay. And it's also from a, a famous um, Japanese um, Platycerium、uh, nursery. Yeah, nursery grow,、uh, grower. Yeah.、Um, Nekomosan. Is this, has this been easy for you to care for here? This is very easy because I only have to water it the, from the top here.、Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, this is one that I actually struggle with. But yeah, very nice to see it. Maybe, it, it doesn't, maybe it's a good thing that it doesn't get wet because for me, I hose on everything and、mm-hmm. sometimes it can get rot. Or... Ah, I see. Yeah, I put this in the kitchen and I just water it from above and then let it drip down. Yeah. And that usually does the trick for me. And it's not a thirsty plant, right? This, no. Is this? It's, it's not, but for me, I don't know why the, the moss here dries up pretty quickly. So,、yeah. when I re, whenever I re,、uh, remember to water it, I do water it. Yeah. It could also be the environment. Do you know the humidity in here? Yes, I do.、Probably. I have a humidifier.、Um, and I have my,、um, 54%. That's、yeah. pretty decent. It's, it's kind of low right now、um, because it's summertime in Japan. I usually do not use a humidifier、yeah. because it's usually 60 70%.、Mm. It's, it's a little low today. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. Clump of fir,、uh, staghorn ferns, I guess they're just babies. Yeah, they're babies, and then I just random plants.、Um, yeah. I just stuck any random plants.、Yeah. And that's a Hoya too. Linear is. Yes. Hey,、uh, no, r e t u s a Yeah, r e t u s a yeah. Is it happy here, do you think? I don't think so. The color is not doing great.、Um, 
but I suck it in anyway. And then some other orchid, I'm not sure. Yeah. But yeah, each kind of this. There. Yeah. yeah. I think it could be the light because the, uh, the, this is facing that yeah, way. Yeah, I this, think so. I'm not getting much light here. But it's just my experiment there. Yeah. <laughs> Random experiment. Yeah, this is the jungle cacti. I still couldn't figure out the exact name for this. It's very conflicting on Google. This is a very interesting fern from South America. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot the name again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll tell you later. Yeah, uh, it can be on the screen. Yeah. The, the, if you can see, the look up the, um, the fawns here. It has a very nice pattern, very beautiful. Like a crocodile skin. Mm -hmm. it's very nice. Wow. Was this difficult to come by, or is this just... This was difficult to come by. Um, I got it on the internet mm -hmm. um, from a fern collector. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping to get this, and I was lucky to get it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's doing okay now. It's stable now, but once I... The beginning when I got it, it was unstable, and it was yellowing leaves and all oh, yellow in front. Okay. But now I think it's stable. Such a good feeling to have uh, rehab the plant. Yeah. Yeah. Where are most of the nurseries in Japan? Not around Tokyo. It, they're, they're more in the middle of Japan, around uh, Aichi, Nagoya, in that area, I, I hear. Also, yeah. uh, northern of, uh, north of Tokyo in Saitama. Okay. Um, I hear this is, there are some um, platycerium nurseries there too. So these are maybe a bit more like farmland areas? Yes, they are. So where, where they have space. Because yeah. you really can't have a greenhouse around you know, Tokyo. The, uh, this last one, this is quick sure. yeah, Hoya. Yeah, this is another random Hoya. I don't know what the name is, but it's... Do you think it's a hybrid or not? Um, it, it's some kind of common Hoya. It was, this is extremely cheap, dirt cheap. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be on the screen as common dirt cheap Hoya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the unofficial name for it. Okay. Mm, some ferns. Yes, right yes, there. yes. So that, that, this is a Nicholas, Dim uh, Nicholas Diamond. Mm -hmm. Um, Flebodium, or oh, I think, or oh, I forgot what it was named. It was, it was a hybrid made in the Netherlands as well. Mm. So it's very, it's a hardy fern. Yeah, beautiful. And I got it for very cheap. I saved it from a discount in, you know, in a uh, shop. Yeah. This one is like a, a Kadaka type fern. So this is a Aspilinium um, uh, Emerald Wave is the cultivar name. Okay. It's a Japanese uh, well, it's called, you know, commonly known as a Japanese um, crispy, crispy Esplanium fern, I think. An applaud to you for this uh, very difficult plant. Is it easy for you here? For me, it's not that difficult, Katia. Okay. Um, uh, and I, I got this plant because this was featured in a, one of my favorite films, mm -hmm. um, it, which is a uh, film by Wong Kar Wai. Mm. It's, yeah. it's um, Chunking Express. How was it featured there? Like, what was um, one of the characters' rooms has plants. Yeah, you can see a lot of plants, and one of them is the Kalatea, this Kalatea. Is this a drying area? No, this is a a, uh, a, um, a blue store. Uh, oh, it looks a bit bluish. Yeah, this pink. is a blue store, a uh, Flabodium blue store, or I think it's a Flabodium. Yeah, and actually, ferns are not are they easy plants in general for you? For me, yeah. because I specialize in, I, I really like ferns. Yeah. For me, ferns are the easiest. Okay, so you yeah. study a lot about the care. Yeah, uh, ferns are my favorite. So, yeah. uh, I most of my environment is focused for ferns. Okay, so for people who say that ferns cannot live in like medium, medium to low humidity, do you think that actually, do you think that's true or? I think for certain type of very fragile ferns, that might be true. Mm. However, if you get, you know, maybe strong ferns, they'll be fine, I think. Okay, so it depends on the species. Very much. Yeah. And also I would like to add that it depends also on where they have been grown. If they have been mm -hmm. grown in a lower humidity, exactly. uh, in, in the country, let's say in this country of Japan, they have like over many generations, they would have yes. adapted. Look at this really cool. Yeah, I made it this little plot. It's oh. kind of broken, but kind of, you know, fern fiddlehead style. Yeah. Is it from like a class or do you like... Uh, I just made it myself with uh, 100 inch chop uh, clay. That's good though. It looks very professional. Mm -hmm. And that's something that is uh, being uh, yep. pushed off into this uh, glass. It actually looks beautiful in there. Yeah, it's not doing best, but it's, it's a... It, this is another orchid. 
Ah. It's a dendrobium something, I forgot what the name is, but this is from, also from Indonesia, mm. Kalimantan, I think. Nice to meet you here. <laughs> Uh, crystallina? Yes, exactly. Uh, is it crystallina? Yes, it's, it is. is it, okay, it's got interesting form from what I'm used to, and this sinus is also quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, our, uh, quick question, are mm -hmm. anthuriums popular in Japan? Yes. Uh, I don't think it's as popular as maybe Western areas, yeah. but it's becoming slowly popular, I think. Yeah. But it's not as um, access, uh, available as other places. Interesting. They're huge in uh, Thailand, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Singapore. It's, mm -hmm. it's like the, the, the number one genus now. But Japan is not known to follow trends. I think from in the plant, they are known to start. <laughs> they have their own idea. So orchids have been strong here. I think firs are also quite strong. Mm -hmm. Platyneriums yeah. quite big. This That's a tree fern. It's a Japanese tree fern. I'm not sure that name, but. But however, this this is supposed to be in the shade. So yeah. when I had it in the sunlight for a little bit, mm. I have it sunburned there. And is it sitting in a bit of water? Yes, it is. It it's, doesn't want to dry out. Yeah, right? this is this is a fern that I I usually do not put a sit in water. But for this fern, this tree fern, I do sit it in water yeah. because it definitely needs the water all the time. Yeah, this is really beautiful. And the, the things that are framed against your bookshelf here, mm -hmm. this is like really wonderful. Oh my gosh, I hope this really inspires more people yeah. to do that. I mean, you, some people may be a bit overwhelming to have all this, but even that one statement or mm -hmm. you know, two statement plants, mm -hmm. and even if you have to buy them every six months because you cannot keep them alive, <laughs> that's kind of okay. Yeah. This, look at this, uh, mm. this display here, and the, the tillandsia just yep. precariously placed over there. Yep. I spray that sometimes just you know, a few times and then it's fine. Yeah. And I'm assuming that's not real plant. That's a fake plant there. Yeah, but it's good. I mean, it's yeah. good to have. I'm not shaming anyone yeah. who would decide to use uh, fake plants, but when used correctly, this and this is how you use, yeah. it, use it correctly, it's amazing. I, I put it up here because I don't get any light here, so yeah. I just have a cheap fake plant there. Yeah, and that one fern, that uh, plastic yeah. fern in the background yeah. too, is just, oh. You have an eye for composition, by the way. Thank I you. don't know if you, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if, maybe because you are also an architect, mm -hmm. so you have this ingrained in you. Now, this is the yeah. the end plants, which I hope, we're crossing my fingers here, that one day we could talk about it. There, sure. A lot of them are from Indonesia, but I have mm -hmm. a hard time getting mm -hmm. Indonesians to talk about this. But tell us. Um, sure. So, so I got this from a nursery in uh, in, in Japan uh, by named by uh, Ito-san. Mm -hmm. um, he. From what I know, he's probably the only person in the world that specializes in ant plants. These are two ant ferns. Mm. So this is a Lecanopteris, uh, Lecanopteris crustes, uh, I don't know how to even say it, uh, crustacea or something. Mm -hmm. um, this is the most, I think, easiest ant fern you can grow, and it's growing very nicely, I think. Yeah. And you can even see the the spores behind there, it's kind of polka dot spores. And this has grown a lot since when I first got it. And I have it on um, uh, moss as well. And here, this is a Leconopteris, a ant fern, uh, Depareoides, which has these kind of very interesting um, rhizomes that look like kind of, for me, it looks kind of like a frog or something. Yeah. And I really like that. Yeah. And it has very, you know, also distinctive fronds as well. Uh, which fronds look a little bit different, I guess, if you put them side by yeah. side. Yeah. So this is a really eye uh, I got from a friend. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be a, a wide form of really eyes, a really eye. Mm -hmm. um, it's growing very nicely now. I when I first got it, it had uh, the shield and stuff, but. I was taking care of it really badly, and it fell off. Mm. But now it's, it's it has uh, done well again. It's it's rehabilitated, yeah. and it's growing very healthy now. Very healthy. So when you have the old fronts die off, don't be disheartened. Mm -hmm. If you give them good care, mm -hmm. uh, they will replace them mm -hmm. very quickly. And this is the uh, another red eye. Yeah, this this one I got from a uh, nursery in Thai mm -hmm. that came to Japan. Mm. Um, this is, you know, you can see the, the shield growing very rapidly now. Yeah. And I have it on the cork and kind of 
mounted on a big chunk of moss to try to make it look more like where it is in the nature. Drenaria. Yeah, Drenaria cruciflorea. Yes, I guess. it is. So I have two of them. Yeah. One here and then another one here. Yeah. I think this one is more impressive, which is with this. All of this is the rhizome here. Yeah. So it's a huge rhizome and many shields. So they put well, one shield and then one of these as well? It, it's actually pretty random. Yeah. So when I first got it, it had two fawns coming out yeah. and one of them died off. Yeah. And then this spring, this fawn came off, uh, came, uh, came out. So I'm just waiting for the next fawn to come out. But it, this is kind of my um, statement piece in my room. Yeah. Kind of, I can see it once I come into the room and I can see it anywhere. It's, it's large. Beautiful. And the new fronts will come, um, the shield fronts will come up beautifully and then they will turn to this, which I think is also yes, beautiful yes, yes. because they kind of immortalize the, mm -hmm. the dead front. Mm -hmm. Beautiful shape of this. This is a common weed in Indonesia, but I, I think hear, here, hear. are they difficult to come by or is it? Japan, they are not, uh, naturally, they are not existed in Japan. Yeah. So for me, I know, I, know, I, I, I know it's a weed in Indonesia and in Southeast Asia, yeah. but for me, it's a fascinating fern. So I really love them. Yeah, Structure. that's why I have two of them here. Yeah, and if you leave them alone for a long time, they can get massive. Yeah. They can become like a whole giant colony of them. This is the Hoya Calistophila. Calistophila. Yeah, which this is a fern. Uh, not fern. I mean, this is a Hoya that came. I mean, originally from uh, Indonesia, so it was actually a wild plant. Yeah, that was taken there. Beautiful, and uh, nice to see you here. There's a Saracenia. Yes. Do you know it's the a, exact name? Yeah, it's a. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, what was it? The flower actually kind of uh, died off already, but. Yeah, but it's still kind of hanging around. Yeah. Um, uh, I, need to, I need to remember the names. Is it Porporaria? Yeah, yeah, it's Purple something. Cool. And then you have some aloe here. Yep. Aloe yeah. there. String of pearls yes. to the side. Are they easy to grow here? Um, yes, they're pretty easy because this this has been adapted to the environment. So yeah, and do they live outside in the winter or do you bring them in? I I, I put it in the winter. Yeah. You bring it in, right? Yeah. But I think this is the kind of weather they like now—a bit cool, yes. bright, mm -hmm. um, and then a bit of palm. I see. I yes, dangerous. one palm and a typical uh, sebum. Tomatophyllum uh, there. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you have that. They actually love full sun, but this can get quite big. Yes. Yeah. But these are the plants that I can, I can basically take care outside, but yeah. not, I mean, it's too kind of too big for me inside. Yeah. And I, I do notice that in Japan, when I went to the plants, there are a lot of plants like this. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Japan, it is actually grown when, for its uh, main stem. So the, mm -hmm. the main stem gets really long. Mm -hmm. Even for alakis like that, yeah. you guys love this yeah, yeah. Uh, portion here. Yes, exactly. That's amazing. And you guys keep the leaves relatively small, but then you have this almost mm -hmm. bonsai-like mm -hmm. stem on these. Very cool. And it's nice to see the different forms that you can get out of these plants. Mm -hmm. My tiny uh, bathroom. Yeah. Wow. It feels humid in here. It is very humid. Uh, are these? Uh, those are ferns too. These are ferns? Yes, they are. Those are Japanese ferns. Valencia. Yep. So, uh, and then those are middle ones, small ferns too. Yeah. Those are Japanese ferns as well. Yeah, they look really good mounted like this, actually. Mm -hmm. And you said the reason why they're in this bathroom is for the high humidity. Yes, humidity mainly. Yeah. And then you have a light source here that you say is on. Uh, Most of the time, time, yes, in yeah. the daytime. This is cute, hello. Yep. I guess we can see hi there. Hi. <laughs> and then tell us about this. So this is a platycerium, but a fake platycerium. Yeah. I got this the first, uh, this is the first platycerium I got. It's even though it's a fake, because I was very worried that I might kill off the plant. Yeah. I did not want to kill it, so I got a fake one. And I got a cork and then uh, some moss and to try to mount it on it to make it look real, but... Oh, so you did not come with this moss? No, no. Yeah, oh. I did it myself. Wow, very determined. I love it. And it's also maybe a good way to practice how to... Yes, 
But in Ethereum. Now, now I see it, it's not really well done, but yeah. at the time it was a good practice. Yeah. And I keep it in here because you know I wouldn't be able to uh, grow regular you know, plasticerium here, mm. but I can have it here. Yeah. I have the feeling. Yeah. So cool. this is my little moist, humid room. And your shower friends. Yes. <laughs> I just water it when I'm showering. Yeah. And they and then they watch you. <laughs> yeah, they watch me naked. <laughs> when I look at a plant that looks cool, it's just fascinating and it 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 gives me energy. Mm. More I hear a lot of people talk about, you know, plants being very calm and peaceful. Mm. For me it's just more a source of energy. Ah, okay. Nice. And also plant care is in, is really interesting too. Mm -hmm. Like we learn about how we can change our environment mm -hmm. to to have the plants live with us, being considerate to yes, other very much. life forms, putting others' needs before mm -hmm. ourselves. That's a good quality to have mm -hmm. as well. And I can see that you are doing that a lot mm -hmm. here. You're, you're really, you know, creating these micro environments here, very considerate uh, about, you know, their needs. And what a wonderful time. Thank you so much for having us here. Thank you. Yeah, and I guess for the rest of you, I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you, Casey. And by the way, the Instagram is going to be somewhere on the screen. Uh, give him a follow. And uh, yeah, I hope I'll come back to Tokyo for more plenty adventures. Thank you, Patreon members, for supporting the channel. Should you consider joining as a member, the Patreon link is Sean from Only Plants. It can also be found in this video description. I've started producing bonus contents for members. These include plant hauls, plant shopping, and mini bite-sized adventures. The same bonus contents will also be unlocked for you if you join to become a YouTuber. There is a monthly membership fee as small as a cup of coffee a month. Simply go to Only Plants channel page and click join. Your contributions help me grow the channel, do better content, and have a better quality of life. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I have another interesting question. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I get that sometimes with my other friends, but because a lot of people know us for a long time before we were into plants, mm -hmm. what do your other like regular non-plant friends think about your hobby? Like, do they do they love it? Like, when they come here, do they do they like wow? Or they they are surprised that I haven't killed all the plants because before I got into plants last year. Yeah. I did not have any confidence in growing any plants. Yeah. I've killed cacti a lot of times and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and they are surprised that I have so many plants mm -hmm. in a tiny room in short time mm -hmm. that I've collected so many plants here. Mm -hmm. So they're surprised and they don't know what these plants are often because they haven't seen them before. Yeah. So they're interested in Cool. What's the ultimate goal of your collection? Or what do you have planned oh. for next? Right now, I'm in a stage that I'm not collecting many plants now. I'm not you know, gathering new ones, but trying to grow them as healthy as possible to maintain them and you know, be sustainable on my, with my plants I already have. Yeah. Um, but the next phase will be, you know, I have this wall here with all these uh, epiphytes. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I just have this uh, frame here, but I want to yeah. kind of stabilize it. It's a beautiful frame, actually. Real construction grade. Exactly. It is a construction. It's actually supposed to go into concrete. Yeah. yeah and I got it for free. Nice. And I just use that. Yeah. But I want to kind of make... So my next step would be to make the environment more suitable for all of these plants, enough more light, mm -hmm. more creating more space on the walls yeah. with these, um, uh, so I don't know how would you say, these frames and uh, poles. Yeah. So do you see yourself getting more of those frames here in this apartment? Yes, I think. I think I'll have another one here, yeah. maybe have some more plants hanging around here okay. and making a kind of a plant curtain. Yeah. That is really cool.